Would you stand with me? As I'm looking around through the congregation, I'm thinking, somebody doesn't have a smartphone because it didn't tell them to move their clocks ahead one hour. And you know, those smartphones, we get used to them doing things for us, but I'm sure people will begin to trickle in this morning. But aren't you glad that we can come into his presence this morning and just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am to be a vessel. Here I am to receive. Here I am to give to you my praise and my worship with my brothers and my sisters here at LifeGate. With those of you that are online this morning, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us, and I'm sure others will be getting on in a few moments. But today is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen? You woke up. You're here. So we know today is the day that God has made. We're here to worship him. Will you worship with me in prayer? Father, we come before you right now. And we say, Lord, feel, feel this place. Lord, may my worship to you come out of my reservoir of my time with you this week. Lord, may I be able to lift my hands in sweet surrender. May I be able to worship you, not because of what I want from you, but what you have done for me, and I thank you in advance for what you're going to continually do. So this morning, we corporately come before you with our hands raised, our hearts surrendered, our eyes open to see what you have for us in store for us. Lord, I thank you for our time of worship through song, our time of worship through giving, our time of worship through the word, that you will be in every avenue of our worship today. And even as we leave, and if we go to a restaurant, that we will be a light and a tool to those that we see and come in contact with. And together we say, amen, amen. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging seas, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Oh, 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 shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Go the young upon that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still holds on to There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out.
closing prayer There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today We won't be quiet We shout out deserves the glory and the honor. Amen. Let's raise a hallelujah. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a man. 
Praise you, Jesus. Deserves the glory. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence. your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. There's a table that you prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battle. And I believe you overcome. And I will lift my song up. Pray for all you've done. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Valley, I know you with me and true your goodness and your mercy follow me a weapon of praise and thanksgiving this is how I find my path and I This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded 
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm that you're here right now surrounding us. You're here right now, Lord, to meet us at our place of need. Lord, the battle is only as much as we allow it because you said greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. So today we sing this song, but we also declare it, that we have learned as your sons and your daughters that we don't fight in the flesh, but we fight. We fight in the spirit. We fight in our heavenly language. We fight with brothers and sisters who come along our side and agree with us. And we see the enemy flee and take his hands off. So we rejoice today, Lord, that we are your victorious sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. Would you turn around and greet somebody this morning? And Pastor Carly is coming. Good morning. It's so good to see you all today. Whether you're here in the church or you're watching online, we'd like to welcome any guest. If it's your first time with us, we'd love for you, if you are here in person, to get one of our Connect cards, fill it out, and turn it in. And if you're watching online, leave a comment that it's your first time joining us, and we would love to reach out to you. We have several announcements coming up, so make sure you're paying attention to the slides that are going to flash. Don't worry if you don't catch it all. They will keep going. And an email will be coming out this week with all of this information. But a few things. This Friday night, March 17th, the city of Paramount is having a pop-up event at Bianchi Theaters. And we are hoping that our Easter flyers will be ready to pick up early this week. And we would love for a group of you, groups of you, to go out Friday night and just um, invite people to our Easter services. So if that's something you'd like to do, watch your text messages this week. As soon as we get the flyers in, we'll arrange a time that you can pick those up. It goes from 5 to 9 p.m., so any time during those four hours, if you would like to grab a stack of those, take your family, take your kids, take your teens down there, even before youth starts, um, and head to the theater and just meet people and invite them to Easter, that would be great. Uh, young adults, there's going to be a hangout for you on Saturday, March 26th at 3 p.m. You guys are going to meet at the Horchateria right here in Paramount. 
And then following that, we're having an all-night church, um, all-church night of worship here at the church at 5 p.m. Saturday, March 26th. Rebecca Key is going to be coming. And ladies, we all know we love Rebecca. Um, she's even done Sunday morning worship for us um, on occasion. And so come out for that Saturday night, the 26th or the 25th, sorry, 25th, and then Sunday, the 26th, is Water Baptism and New Member Sunday. So if you are joining the church, if you've been going through Reaching for the Crown, please make sure you fill out that form and give it um, to pastors, or this Wednesday night, bring it to Reaching for the Crown Square 3. And then if you would like to be water baptized and you've never done that before, there are cards on the info table outside that you can grab and fill out and hand um, to one of our ushers. Or if you're online watching and you are interested in being water baptized on Sunday the 26th, go ahead and leave a comment saying, I'd like to be baptized, and somebody will reach out to you as well. Kids ministry. If you are involved in kids ministry in any way, or even if you're a parent of a kid and you would like to come, or you might want to get involved in kids ministry, we would love to have you join us that same Sunday, March 26th, from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Branch Church in Long Beach. Our district next-gen coordinator, Natalie Working, will be leading that. She is a wealth of resources. She has done kids ministry for a long time. She has traveled the world doing kids ministry. And um, she has offered to put together a training for any of our local churches that would like to attend. So if you would like to go to that, please see me as well um, to sign up for that. Again, Reaching for the Crown this Wednesday, 7 p.m. We are on Square 3. If you have not been to Square 1 or Square 2, you can still jump in for Square 3 on Wednesday night. That's totally fine. We will get you caught up after with Square 1 and Square 2. But feel free to come out on Wednesday nights for that. Easter is coming. And we have a couple things going on for that. We would like, if you would be interested or wanting to help us, to, um, for you to donate Easter eggs pre-filled with individually wrapped peanut-free candy or little toys, stickers, erasers, anything that fits in an Easter egg that you would like to donate. If you could bring those by Palm Sunday, we are going to have an Easter egg hunt here for our kids Easter Sunday during our second service. And um, you can bring those anytime. You can bring them during the week. Contact me. You can bring them Wednesday night to Reaching for the Crown. Or if you would like to even donate maybe like a raffle prize, we could raffle off during um, kids service that day. Anything is welcome. And then also, we are going to participate in our city Easter egg hunt. So that is Saturday, March, um, April 1st. It is at Progress Park from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We are still waiting for a few details because we are hoping we can actually have a church booth there. Um, but if not, we are going to go and just meet people in the city, take our Easter flyers, and just love on people and serve the city however we can, even if it's unofficial. Um, but we are hoping I have a message into one of the recreation leaders there to see if we would be able to actually help participate in the event in some way. Also, April 1st, men, if you are a man, ears open, we have an event for you. I know it's been a very, very long time. So Kyle is super excited. He is going to be um, starting to help lead up, um, head up some men's events. So April 1st, men, 3 p.m., you guys are going to meet here at the church. I know there's going to be food. There will be a sign-up sheet out next week. But if you're going to come, talk to Kyle, talk to Walter. Um, Walter probably will be cooking. He does a lot of our cooking for our event. So I don't know if it's going to be barbecue or if it's going to be tacos, but there's going to be food, men. Feel free to invite any other men you know. This is going to be a great opportunity just to hang out, talk about the future of men's ministry, how men can get involved in serving the church, and just building friendships with each other. And then, of course, Easter's coming, so plan to join us April 2nd for Palm Sunday at 10 a.m. Good Friday, we will have a service here at 7 p.m. And then Easter, we are having two services, 8 a.m., 10 a.m. And then our second service at 10 a.m. will be the only service that does have classes for children. So, again, flyers will be out soon. And then Women's Bible Study, Tuesday nights, 6.30. We're continuing in our book, Refresh. And camps are coming, and we're going to make this super fast, but just... Watch the slides, check your emails this week. Camp prices have gone up, so we want to make sure you are aware of that as early as possible. Uh, kids camp will be July 5th through 8th, and it is $240. And youth camp will be July 17th through 21st, and it is $310. So start saving now. Um, start planning to put that away. If you would like to help sponsor kids go to camp, you can mark envelopes for that as well. But those dates are coming. You want to make sure that is on your radar because... June creeps up fast when deadlines and money is due, and youth leaders will be sharing more about that with the youth on Friday nights, and kids, I'll be contacting you, 
But just keep an eye on those dates if you want to send your kids or your youth to camp. And our ushers are going to come. We are going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. So as we prepare to do that, let's just bow our heads and pray um, as we go into this time of giving. God, we thank you for being so good. And we thank you for always showing up in every way we need. And so, God, we pray that as we give to you this morning, we recognize that everything we have is from you that you continue to provide for your children in very tangible ways and in ways that we don't always see. But God, we thank you for being our provider. We pray that you would bless these offerings as we give them to you this morning with a joyful heart. In your name, amen. Daily, daily I surrender Grateful today is all that I need Surprised by your mercy, it's new every morning Awaken my soul to sing Awaken my soul to sing I will trust where you lead I will trust when I can sing Morning by morning Great is your faithfulness to me Breath by breath overtaken by one One step at a time when I'm overwhelmed. Strain for today, bright hope for tomorrow. Awaken my soul to sing. Awaken my soul to sing. I will trust.
morning by morning great is your faithfulness to me i will trust with all my heart you are good you always are morning by morning great is your faithfulness to me i will trust with all my heart you are good you always are morning by morning great is your faithfulness to me i will, I will trust, trust with all my heart you are good you always are morning by morning great is your faithfulness to me wow jesus we set ourselves apart to you to be led by you you are faithful we can trust in you and walk with you day by day knowing that you're going to take us in the right direction so Lord we humble ourselves before you and we lift ourselves to walk after you in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you Lord amen Amen. You know, um, it's just amazing how God puts things together. I didn't converse with Richard today, but, you know, I said last week we talked about keep it or, keep it or, yes, okay, somebody was here. Um, you know, we had more people here last week than we do this week, and we have a few people who didn't quite ring the bell a little an hour early this morning, but that's okay. God is good. Amen? Amen. We're going to wake them at home right through their TV as they're watching this morning. God is so good. But as, as Richard was just singing this song of how perfect it is because the title of the message this morning is Keep the Way or Lose Your Way. Keep the Way or Lose Your Way. So we're going to talk about that this morning as we're, talking, as we're continuing with the Keep It or Lose It series. So church, aren't you glad to be here this morning? It's good to see all of you. It's great to be in, in the house of the Lord. You're a blessed people, and I am blessed to be with all of you. And uh, you know how much God loves us. He really does. He loves us. I love singing that song too. Oh, how he loves. That's just a wonderful song as well. But here we are together. We're praising. We're worshiping. We're learning, we're discovering, we're understanding, we're receiving, we're sharing, we're encouraging, we're declaring, so we may go out and give away the truth of the truth. And the truth is Jesus, as he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? So keep the way or lose your way. It's very simple. It's one or the other. Keep the way or lose your way. At the outset of our time Together from the Word, I want to share with you a principal, a principal characteristic of a New Testament church, a strong characteristic of the New Testament church. Lord, we receive of you this morning, and we're asking you just to grace us with your Word today in Jesus' name. When we look in Scripture, how many kinds of churches do we see described? Makes you think. How many kinds of churches do you see described in Scripture? Now, the church wasn't called the church in the Old Testament. It came about in the New Testament. How many kinds of church do you see? One. 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 What kind of church is that? What kind of church is that? And I'm not messing with you. It's a reality. Because where did we see the church really start taking shape and form? Come on, where do we see it in the New Testament? Where do we see it? Where do we see the church start taking shape and form? And what did you say? Acts. Acts, thank you. The Acts of the Apostles, right? Acts. The book of Acts. And we see the church there 
right in the beginning. And what kind of church is it? It's a If you didn't get it from that, I don't know what you will, but it's a spirit-filled church. Come on, people. All right, everybody got to get up and do some calisthenics, right? Okay, do a few jumping jacks. We'll get going. I don't know what that'll do to our mind, but it'll sure get our body going a little bit. So we we see a spirit-filled church because that's the only thing we see is come in the book of Acts. What do we see? Jesus said, my spirit's going to come upon you, right? And then we see in Acts 2 that that happened. And we see throughout the book of Acts, thing, one thing after another happening where the Holy Spirit is moving and guiding and leading his church. The Holy Spirit is leading and directing the church of which Jesus is the head. Because this is what? The Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit, And so it's one where the gifts of the Holy Spirit are active. And you see that happening all through the book of Acts. People are being ministered to. They're growing in Christ. They're being baptized in water and then baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's what we see in Acts chapter 2. And not only Acts chapter 2, but the places that it says three times directly in the book of Acts, it talks about speaking in tongues. And the other two times are inferred because it says like at the beginning. So we see those things happening here. And we see people walking then with spiritual authority. We see people using the gifts of the Spirit, wisdom, the, the, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith. The working of miracles, the gifts of healings. We see tongues and, and we, we hear about, you know, the, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy. We see all of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to speak more about that in the future. But we have to understand or we can come to understand that people were being ministered to and growing in Christ as they were being led by the Holy Spirit. One thing I want to share with you is this. Be open to the Holy Spirit's guidance. Be open to where he leads. Keep the way or lose it. Let me ask you a question. What do we all need so that We can move from one place to another, going to somewhere a far distance. We have, we've never been there before. It's it's territory that we have never broached before. What do we need in order to get there? Directions, what? Transportation. But the transportation can be there, but you have to know how to get there, right? So what do you need? Direction, guidance, a map. Thank you. Somebody finally said the key word. But we don't use maps today. We use Google Maps. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> right? That's good. That's good. Because that's what we use anymore. I use it all the time. I just call it up say, hey, here's where I want to go. Go to it. Even if I'm not... Need, and even though I know my way to get there, because now it helps you with traffic and knowing which way is the fastest, right? So, you know, we can, we can see that. We can see the yellow lines. We can see the red lines. We can see the green line, which we're, thank you, Jesus, right? Because when we, when we see that, we say, well, we got free, free going. Or you see the blue line, you know, that's, that's clear and no red coming in and all of that. The other day, I hit a bunch of red. I was taking the kids to, my grandkids to school for Carly and, um, and, Jumped down there, and all of a sudden, I saw, like, way in the distance, I saw some red blinking lights or whatever. I said, and I looked at the thing, I said, oh, wow. So, anyway, but I didn't have my maps on. But I did see the top of the, the ambulance or whatever it was down the other end. So, I quickly moved all the way over and got off and went another direction. And when I got off, I said, okay, now you got to get me there. Because I haven't been this way before. i got to make sure the fastest way to get the kids to school on time. So, I hit the thing, and it told me, and, and we got them there on time. Not as early as Jackson wanted me to get him there, but nonetheless, we got there on time for school. But we need these maps. We need Google. 
We need the Holy Spirit. When we don't read it correctly, the map, we end up in all sorts of trouble. My mom and dad, years ago, they were driving across country to convention where all the pastors gathered together. So this was years ago, and they were driving. I think they were on their way back home. And, and anyway, all of a sudden, as, da- as mom was driving, dad was tired, and so, you know, he was sleeping a little bit. And, and uh, all of a sudden, the car started bouncing around, and, you know, shaking a little bit. And dad woke up, and what in the world is going on? And, and you know, as, as, as he got to this place, and it was getting louder, looked, and mom ran out of road. Somehow she ended up on some gravel road somewhere, not knowing how that happened, but she ended up on this gravel road and had no idea where they were. And so evidently she took a wrong turn somewhere and they stopped the car and then they both just laughed. They both just laughed. They didn't know where they were. They figured it out. They, I mean, they, they went somewhere and they got everything back together and got back on the right roads and so forth. I don't know exactly how they did that, but nonetheless... They got home fine. Now, some of you like to have everything in your day planned out a certain way. How many of you really like your day planned out? Yeah, you like, you know, you want to know hour, almost minutes to know exactly what's happening, right? We live by a calendar, a day planner, something along that line. Of course, we do that in our phones now, right? So you may not put it down on paper or in a regular calendar, but you have it in your calendar and your phone. I do that all the time. And so, uh, you know, and when you do, it helps you to guide out your life and work through your day. We try really hard to stick to that plan. You know, yesterday was a crazy day. Actually, all week was. We've had several things. You know, last week, my mom was, went to uh, the hospital. Or, yes, yeah, she ended up in the ER because the urgent cares weren't open. And so she went to ER. They finally sent her home, said, follow up with your PC tomorrow. We followed up with a PC. And uh, we talked to him. And, and anyway, came home. You know, they had some medications that the, she was given both at the ER and then and the doctor said, yeah, those are fine. Take those and that's great. Everything's good. Tuesday, mom wasn't feeling so great. So we took her back to ER. She ended up being in the hospital Tuesday night, Wednesday night. They did CT scans. They did everything because, you know, we thought, we thought maybe she had Bell, Bell's palsy we didn't know because her face started drooping a little bit on the right side, you know, and so, and it was confirmed that she had had shingles, and so she had all of this going on, and, and uh, um, anyway, they did a CT scan, then on Thursday, we had to do an MRI, they had to wait, though, for the, to do the MRI for the uh, company to come that actually, uh, who the pacemaker was made by, she has a pacemaker in, and so, you know, you can't just throw a person in there, but, um, unless it's compatible. Well, it was compatible, but they still had to have a representative on site because they have to adjust a few things before they can actually do the MRI. So, they did that. Thank you, Lord. That made me just think, maybe that person adjusted something in her pacemaker. Okay, thank you. Um, You know, that's why we have to stop and listen to the Holy Spirit, and sometimes He speaks through us and we don't even realize it. And he tells us something, but I have to ask a question now. So thank you. And uh, God's good. I got something out of this message, even if you don't. Okay. And so, uh, you know, so we went through this day, and then we came home Thursday, and then we took her back in yesterday. She wasn't feeling too good in the morning, and she didn't want to go back to the hospital, so we didn't. And we had, you know, a little confrontation going on. Mom, we want to take care of you. And she just did not want to go. Finally, around 3 o'clock, she said, maybe I should go. I go like, okay. And so we went. Thank God we got there. We were only there a couple of hours. The doctor actually came out to talk to us in the waiting room and uh, worked with us a little bit there, had seen all the stuff and heard all the things that we were dealing with, and he gave us confidence uh, to know that everything was going to be fine and just go ahead and do this and keep doing this and 
and uh, even gave me a little pat on the back for taking care of these things and, you know, watching over these things. And so, anyway, I felt a whole lot better after we went and saw this individual. It was a doctor that Carly had had in emergency as well before, and, and she really liked him. So that was great. Found that out later. But sometimes we plan everything out. We really try hard to stick to that, but will you make this change in your life? Will you plan to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance? That really isn't a, a detailed map. There really isn't a detailed map that'll take you through every minute of our day. But God likes to surprise us sometimes. And he likes to surprise other people through us sometimes. He likes, you know, he does things and uses us in a way to be a blessing to someone else or somehow someone ends up blessing us. I want to give you a key verse for today. And it is one we can memorize in just a moment, and yet it is so powerful. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 14. You can turn there in your Bibles, in your phones, tablets, whatever you have this morning. I'm going to start with verse 12, but verse 14 I want to key in on. Romans chapter 8. This whole chapter is about living in the life of the, the Holy Spirit. And he goes on later in the scripture, the verses that you know well about nothing can separate us from the love of God. The depth, north height, all those things. And so goes on. But before that, so there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Is the way chapter 8 starts out. And, but go to verse 12 and says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Not to the flesh. Well, let me read it in the New Living Translation. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Aren't you glad for that, believers? That we don't have to live like we used to in the past. We don't have to keep doing the things we did in the past. And you're saying, oh, I don't know. I'm just so used to doing this. I don't know how to break these habits. I don't know how to, how to break or walk away from these kinds of things. The Bible here tells us from the writer Paul, the apostle, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Those things that the enemy has grasped a hold of you, those areas where he's had his clutches on you, you have no obligation to follow those things, but you, those things can be broken through the power in the name of Jesus. Amen? We don't have to walk that way. For if you live, verse 13, by its dictates, you will die. It will separate you from God. You will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. How many want to live? Yeah, we want to live, and we want to live life forevermore. We don't want to be walking the ways of our old self. We find in the Word of God where it tells us to, to kill the flesh, to kill the old man, to put the old man down and walk anew. Walk a new life. Walk the life that, that Jesus has told us to walk. And what we've read in his word. And as we've been saved and we've been redeemed by his blood. That way we can now walk in a different way, a different direction. The one that would please God as it tells us to do in Romans chapter 12. For if you live by existence, you will die. Verse 14. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. You will live. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Man, don't you like that designation? That you're children of the Most High God? I mean, throughout my life, and I know not everybody can say these kinds of things because people have grown up different, but all through my life, I've been very proud to say George Jameson was my dad. Jackie Jameson is my mom. Deborah Jameson is my wife. I'm proud to say that Carly is my daughter and Lucas is my son. I've been proud to say those things. Why? Because they follow Jesus and they've taught me the right ways. They're not perfect. They didn't do everything right. They spanked me many times when I didn't deserve it. Oh, just <laughs> no better than that. They kept me straight. 
They kept me walking in the right path. Yeah, we didn't always agree on everything. But I tell you what, on the major things, I would not be where I am today without their leadership and their guidance because they followed the Holy Spirit and taught me to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Somebody on the golf course uh, this week found out that I was a preacher. And they asked me, well, how did you end up in that? I said, well, I don't know what you think, but God spoke to me. And I told them of the situation that God spoke to me. They said, well, what kind of church? Is it a Christian church? I said, yeah, it's a Christian church. And, you know, explained to them a little bit. And I said, yeah. And I, I told them that it was a, you know, a, a spirit-filled church. We believe in the whole Bible. We believe in everything in the Bible. Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Healer, the Baptizer with the Holy Spirit, and the soon-coming King. He says, you guys speak in tongues? I go, Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, you know, kind of take it back a little bit, but they're very respectful. And it was just great where we got to say something to testify of the Lord. And, and you know, we didn't have to, you know, and it wasn't, it was a little awkward, but a message got out. But I'm just so thankful that I have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of because of way I was taught, the way I've read God's Word, the way I've learned myself, and the way God spoke to me to move me into ministry because it wasn't something that I want to do, but because of what God wanted to do and what God was doing in me, not what my parents were telling me to do at that point. Why? Because they taught me how to listen to the Spirit. And that's what we're teaching here. When you read God's word, you begin to see the different ways that God moved upon people and they listened to the Holy Spirit and the same things that happened with Peter and with Paul and all these other apostles, it's the same way that you and I can listen to the Holy Spirit and be directed by him and follow in the ways so we don't get lost. We find the right direction. But check that out, children of God. Did you get that? Verse tells us something amazing. It tells us how to live and who we are, that those who are led by the Spirit are of God, are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. I love that designation, a child of God. And he's not saying you're just some little immature little baby. No, you're children of the Most High God who walk now with the power and authority of, of the Father. Amen. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit to walk in that power and authority. You have that. The exousia Amen. and the dynamis, the power of God that you can do because you have the authority to do that. Children of God, absolutely. But how many of, of you see something more than that? Get this. It's describing the lifestyle of sons of God, of believers, followers of Jesus, Christians. It's describing the lifestyle. This is the way Christians are to live each day of their life, led by the Spirit, not the flesh. It's a lifestyle. We talked about lifestyles this last week. As we were on Wednesday nights, and I urge you to come on Wednesday night. We were learning a lot. Say, oh, I didn't catch the first one or second one. We'll start now. It's okay. You're going to learn some more things, and then we can go back, and I'll be glad to even sit down with you privately if you want to, and we will do that, or have a small session with a few people that missed it. I'll be glad to do that, because these things are so important, because it's teaching us how to begin to walk like Christ and maybe you've been doing that, but there's some things that maybe could be added into your walk, into your lifestyle of serving Jesus. Led by the Spirit, not the flesh. What does verse 13 say? To put to death. What do you put to death? The deeds of the flesh. So quickly, being led by the Spirit involves three things. One, three things. Put to death the deeds of the flesh. That's number one. Put to death the deeds of the flesh. If you want to be led by the Spirit, you are to put to death the deeds of the flesh. All those desires that were or that are 
that are, because sometimes we still have vices that we're working through, those things that are against his ways, contrary to the things that Jesus has commanded us in Scripture. We went through over the last many weeks some of the commands that, that Jesus has told us to do, to pray and, and to go into all the world and preach the gospel, many of those things, so you can look those things back up again. Anything that gets in the way of following Jesus, those are deeds of the flesh. So what do we do? How do we live? The more fully people are led by the Spirit, the more they will be obedient to God and live according to His standards. The more we will look like Jesus. We'll become more like Jesus when we are led by the Spirit. How how many of you want to be more like Jesus? Man, I do. I want to be more like Jesus. Because this man can't, won't do things right unless I'm following after the Lord, unless I separate myself to Him and His ways, and I allow His Word to be, to be spoken into my life and then begin to work through me. So what action step will you make today? What action step will you make? What things are you being led to quit right now? Think about it. Are there things in your life that you're being led by the Spirit of God to quit? Maybe it's some habit. Maybe it's some direction that you go. Maybe it's places that you frequent. Maybe it's certain kinds of people that you hang around. I'm not saying you can't hang around some unbelievers because that's the way they're going to get saved. But if they're affecting you rather than you affecting them, they're influencing you rather than you influencing them, then we have an issue. And you've got to identify that. When you identify that, then you make some action steps. Say, I need to either be more influential or I need to see my way out for a while so that I can come back at another time and begin to minister into their life. So right now, will you make an action step and confess those, those things as sin and surrender your life to be led by the Holy Spirit? Will you do that? Kill those things now by His power that works in you and through you. The second thing is obedience. Obedience. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. I want to just read this. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Interesting. He was reading the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I, how can I, unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the, to the, shear, uh, to the slaughter, as a lamb is silent before the shears. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Ozotus, And he preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Now, Philip didn't have much of a choice there. He went and talked to this individual. And then when he was done there, his time was up. God said, okay, you did that. He's going to go. And he began to rejoice. And he was good. He got baptized. He's going to follow follow the Lord. Now I'm going to take you somewhere else. And he just translated him to someplace else. And he began to speak to the Lord everywhere he went. Wow. He made choices in his life. He followed the leading of the Lord and did what God had told him to do. And look what it did for him. Beat me up, Scotty. That's what happened. And then he just 
beamed him down somewhere else. Wow. We can be sensitive to the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. And when we are, great things will happen when we are obedient to Him. That's really important. My dad, um, w- when he was working in the car business many years ago, he was a manager at this place, and uh, this, the salesman either quit or was fired, but they used to give salesmen cars to drive, demonstrators they called them, and so they would drive around the cars so that they would meet people and they would have a car and, and everything was good. I got to do that for a while, too, when I uh, sold cars. But this individual, he either quit or was fired, and uh, he took his demonstrator with him. <laughs> and it was gone for a month. One day, Dad was sitting at his desk doing some work, you know, and doing all kinds of things, you know. But uh, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon Dad, and all of a sudden, Dad jumped up from his desk and said, I'm going to go find that car. He told the people, I'm leaving. I'm going to go find that car. It's been a month. San Jose is a big place. So it wasn't just a little tiny, you know, hick town where they got four roads and one stop sign. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's more than that. San Jose is a big town. This was back in the probably late 70s, or, or I mean early 70s or so. And so all of a sudden, God got, Dad got in his car, and the Holy Spirit began to direct him. Turn here, turn here, turn here, turn here, turn here. He finally turned into our parking lot, and there was the car. It was outside of a bar. Dad didn't frequent bars, didn't know these bars. All of a sudden, though, he walked into the bar. The guy was there. He went in, got the keys from the man, secured the car again. You say, well, oh, it's just happenstance, just coincidence. No, he actually was led by the Spirit to get up from his desk and go right then and follow, and he went. It was led right to the spot of where that car was. And everything went peaceful from there, directed by the Holy Spirit. Folks, those things can happen, and they do happen. The Spirit guides our lives if we allow Him to. The third thing involved in, involved in being open to the Spirit's guidance is flexibility. Flexibility. If we are so tight with our schedule, our plan, there is no room for the Holy Spirit to move. And we can do that. We can get so tight with everything. We can do that on Sunday mornings and get so tight with the, thing, with, with the schedule and we don't allow the Holy Spirit to move anywhere. We have our day, our church service planned out just so precisely. Could it be that we will miss what the Holy Spirit wants to do if we never allow for people to come to the front? We never allow our time to fellowship. We never allow, you know, do that. I know sometimes there, you know, services are different. But God wants us to be free. And he wants us to be led by his spirit. In Acts chapter 10, we read an amazing story of of Peter and then a Gentile man named Cornelius. And Cornelius uh, was a God-fearing individual. He prayed regularly. And one day at a visitation from an angel... And the angel began to tell him of things and, and told him, hey, there, you know, about, uh, about a man and named Peter, and, and then he, he was to go get him and, and bring him back. Meanwhile, as these, this conversation was going on, I'm making it very short. You can read the whole chapter and get all the details. But meanwhile, while, while that was going on and that conversation was happening between the angel and, and you know, and Cornelius was a little freaked out by that, but... Uh, all of a sudden, uh, um, Peter was having a, a situation going on between him and the Lord as the, as the Holy Spirit was moving there, and he went into a vision. It says a trance, and later it says vision, depending on translations that you read. But um, he, was, uh, he was having this vision of a sheet coming down filled with all kinds of animals, and, and the Lord told him, Kill and eat. And Peter said, not so. I'm not going to do that. These animals are unclean. They go against the the Jewish law dietary, um, you know, commands. I don't do this. You know, I've never done this. And the Lord told him, what I've said is clean, is clean. And And he saw this vision three times. The sheet was taken up. 
And then the Lord spoke to him and said, there's going to be somebody coming to the door and asking for you to come with them. Go with him. So he enters in the house as, you know, he goes with, the person shows up there at the door. As, as that individual, as Cornelius was led to send his people to go get Peter. And so Peter then went with him, went back to the house, and he says, you know, I'm not supposed to enter into a Gentile's house. That's against our regulations. But the Lord showed me that every person deserves to know Christ. Every person is the same. Isn't it glad? I mean, you look around this place and we got different backgrounds and cultures and, and, and ethnicities and things like that. It's wonderful. We're just people. We're just people. We might speak some different languages. I wish I could speak Spanish better. But you know what? That's my fault because I didn't study it. I never thought I would be in Paramount this long. And I keep saying that. And I should just start studying Spanish. And if somebody wants to help teach me, I'll do my best. Okay, so <laughs> we'll see. But you know what? There's, there's something that we are to do. And that is follow the leading of the Lord. And so Peter did that. And when he got there, he began to speak to Cornelius and, and his family and friends that he had invited there. And he told them of the gospel. He shared with them. He says, you know this, you know this, you know this. But maybe they didn't know everything. And he shared with them about who Jesus Christ was. Shared with them about his death, burial, and resurrection. And all of a sudden, as he was preaching, he was talking to them, these individuals had received what Peter was saying, but they just began to speak in tongues. They got filled with the Holy Spirit right there without anything else happening. So wait, wait a minute, we're supposed to get saved and baptized in water, and then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter then says, you know what? Why should we forgive them, uh, forbid them being baptized in water? They've already received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so they baptized them in water. They had already received the Holy Spirit. And baptism is, in water is simply a proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ to those that are around you. Those who see you get baptized. It is a declaration that you're going to follow the Lord and that you're dying to your old self and rising anew to walk a new life with Jesus. That's what baptism is all about. Sometimes we'll use the term, you go down underneath the water as a watery grave. You die, you die to your old flesh and rise anew to walk like Jesus. Read Romans chapter 6. Start with verse 1 and read there at least through verse 14. Read all of that and you will know what baptism is about. Baptism, if it isn't a... Uh, it, it doesn't do anything to us, but it's a testimony of what God has already done inside of us. So the act of baptism is something that we do to follow the Lord. But if we're not separating ourselves to God to live his ways, then we're just getting wet. We're going to be baptizing people, as Carly was sharing just a little while ago. On March, uh, on March 26th. Well, wouldn't it be great? To be filled with the Holy Spirit as well. And you can do that even today. What if Peter had said, no, I won't go? If he didn't make room to be moved by the Holy Spirit. If God had told Peter everything, maybe Peter would have said no. But he didn't tell him everything that was going to happen. Maybe he would have gotten in the way of trying to make those things happen and mess up what God wanted to do instead of just taking it as it comes. And that's what he did. I was at a hospital one night to visit someone, and someone came in the lobby, and no one else was there except a person that I took with me and this individual that, that came in, and they wanted to ride home. It was real late at night. It's not something I generally do and just, you know, take people late at night home, you know, and that kind of thing or whatever, put them in my car. But I believe I was being prompted by the Holy Spirit to do this. The person directed, uh, directed us to their house. We turned down the road 
that uh, the street that goes towards their house, and there were lights flashing in the street. Police were there. They had been looking for this person. He had been missing. I could have missed it. I could have missed it. I could have said, well, my wife has dinner waiting, so I can't go. I, I, don't, I don't want to get home too late. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll wake the kids. I, I, don't, I don't want to get home and, you know, I, I want to get home earlier. Uh, you know, the Warriors are playing basketball. I, I got to go see the Warriors play. Yeah. Oh, he's in the other room, Joseph. <laughs> my antithesis, the, the Laker fan. But I, I've got all these other things to do. What about being led by the Spirit and doing what God wants me to do? Man, I wish I could say that I've, I've nailed it every single time. Don't you wish that? That you'd nailed it every single time that the Holy Spirit spoke to you, that you're always open to the Holy Spirit? But you know what? Let's not say, oh, what could have been. Let's say what can be. And what can be is we can start today to be open to the Holy Spirit in a greater way than we've ever been before. We will put to death the deeds of the flesh. Everything that gets in the way of following Jesus. How obedient, how flexible will we be to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Well, you can be like Peter. You can be like Philip. You can be like my dad. God has a blessing at the end of a gravel road. God has a blessing at the end of a gravel road. You don't know where he's taking you, but when you get there, guess what? You can be in that hospital, and guess what? You can help lead another person home to safety. You can lead a person into the arms of Jesus. You can lead your family to follow the things of the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can fill your family so that you begin to operate in the things of the Spirit where you can lay hands on people and see miracles happen within your household or those that you know, your friends, your family. And we can begin to see all of that happen just like what happened in the lives of the apostles. Your children of God. Dear children of God. He writes this to us. He shares this with us so that we can walk in His ways. Will you stand with me? Just bow your heads for a moment. And I want to ask, first of all, how many of you just simply want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You're not really walking with Him. You haven't separated yourself to Him, but you want to follow Jesus with all your heart, and you haven't really done that yet. You want to ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sin. All the things of the past, your old flesh, your old man, but you want to, want to begin to walk a new way. How many of you say, I want to give up that old man. I want to walk in the ways that Jesus wants me to walk because I want to walk a, life, a, a, a direction that will lead me to life. Anybody here this today? Just lift up your hand right now. Yeah, good. Thank you, young man. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Those, who, those two of you that raised your hand, would you just walk down here to the aisle with me? Come on. Come on. Make it. Jason or somebody or Kyle or one of you, just run on down here. You got two youth down here that just made a declaration for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Good. Good. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is so good. Hey, I need somebody down here. Well, you want to come? It's okay. Why don't you come with? Why don't you come with Jason? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, Chris was right here, but that's right. Okay, come right over here. Yeah, I should talk to her. She used to direct youth too, so <laughs> yeah, get to know each other. Begin to talk to them just about the Lord and His Word, and anybody else want to join them, just come on down. If you really want to separate yourself to Jesus, and maybe you haven't made that declaration in front of others, and then if you've never been baptized, you know, and we're going to do that in just a couple of weeks. 
And we're going to do that. That's great. That's great. Praise God. Praise God. How many others of you said, I've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've never received my heavenly language of speaking in tongues, but I want that to happen. I want the gifts of the Spirit to begin to start flowing in me. I want you to just come on down here. If that's you, I just want you to come on down here. We're going to see God do some amazing things. Yeah. All right. Hey, some of you power ladies right here, just come on down. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Men of God, you need to be directed by the Holy Spirit. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, you know what? Today's a great day to do that. God is so good. God is so good. They're going to stay praying right here. Would you just lift your hands towards them for a moment? Jesus, we want you to pour out your spirit upon these individuals. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation today that you saved these three individuals. They gave their life to you today, Lord Jesus. Here we are on March 12th, 2023, that you did an amazing work of your grace in these individuals' lives where they're receiving you as their Lord and Savior. They may have heard about you. They may have, have been in church for a long time. But today is a day that they're declaring, I'm going to walk with Jesus and I'm never going to turn around and go any other way. I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right here, right now, in these individuals' lives. We give you praise and glory and thanks, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How great you are, Jesus. How great you are. Lord, just fill us with your spirit. Cause this church to rise up anew and be refreshed by your spirit, to be led by your spirit, to do the things that you want us to do, to take time to do that. God, things will wait. And, and Lord, maybe things won't, but God, you have a plan. You had a plan for this morning to do an amazing work of your grace in the lives of people. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing now in your precious name, Lord. In your precious name, we give you glory and honor. God, you are so good. You are so good. You are so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, touch your people. Is there anybody here who's, who's sick today? You need a touch from Jesus? Right, lift your hand wave it out. Real good. If you need a touch from Jesus today in some specific way, you need an answer. Okay, you right here. She's going to pray for you. She's going to take care of all your needs. She's going to talk to you. Jesus is going to take care of you. But she's going to help you through all of that. Good. Good. Just lift your hand. Jesus, you see these hands that are lifted. Lord, send forth your healing power all over this place. Your direction, your guidance. If people need, need the understanding about circumstances that are going on in their lives, thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm believing that you're taking care of mom, that she's going to be just fine. And everything is going to be just perfect in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. That all these things that affected her this last week. Jesus, you had a plan. You had a purpose. And though we may not know exactly what it is, Jesus, you know exactly what needs to happen. So I thank you, Lord God, today that you are working in and through her life, just as you're working all and all my brothers and sisters right here this morning. Jesus, you are so good. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessing and honor and glory to your name. Lord, wherever we go today, whatever is happening today, we just ask that you will grace us with your, with your glory, your spirit, each and every day, Lord. We trust in you. We trust in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they're going to continue to pray up here, and uh, you can continue to pray. You can be dismissed, whatever you would like. But just uh, walk in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Amen.